if we ever ask the land and hold short, say less and do this. Let go! go! At some point throughout your pilot journey, you may be asked to land and hold short. Whether that's land and hold short of a crossing runway or land and hold short of a taxiway. Either way it goes, you want to make sure that you're able to execute the maneuver and understand what you're being asked to do before you commit and accept that type of clearance. We about to get into that thing. Uh, boom! Land and hold short. The term you want to familiarize yourself with is lasso. Land and hold short operations. That's something that's going to be very important for you to understand and know how to execute if ever asked to do so. And there's certain things that you want to make sure that you are aware of when dealing with any kind of lasso kind of situation. Let run that thing. What exactly are they asking you to do if they're asking you to land and hold short? Do exactly that. They want you to continue to land. You have been cleared to land, but they want you to hold short of something. They may be asking you to hold short of a taxiway or they may be asking you to hold short of a runway. You can easily get this kind of clearance request asked of you from ATC at any given moment. You can be aware of this sometimes because sometimes it may be noted in the short supplement. Sometimes ATC will just tell you land and hold short operations are in effect. So you want to mentally prepare for this and a few things that you want to know. So let's just say this diagram right here, it has a crossing runway. Of course, you got runway 33 and runway 15. And then of course, crossing it is runway 7 and runway 25. If this was the scenario and you were landing on runway 33, it may tell you something of the effect of clear to land on runway 3 three hold short of runway 725 so you want to make sure that you land and before you get to that crossing runway you land and hold short the reason why this is key that you're able to execute this because this may change a significant amount of sequence of events for you depending on conditions depending depending on your load and whether or not you're even able to land and hold short of that crossing one rate so you always want to be cognizant of this and aware of this for example let's just say the runway 33 you had 5,000 feet of runway so in a perfect scenario when you were doing your flight planning everything was working out everything is banging and going great but then when you pulled up and rolled up at the airport, it was landing whole short operations were in effect. So instead of dealing with the 5,000, you looked at the short something and you figured out that the fact that it was indicated that if you were to hold short of runway 25, you only have 2,500 feet of runway. Can you still land on 2,500 feet of runway given the conditions, given your load, given everything that you've already calculated in your flight plan. This is how things can change on a dime for you and you need to be aware of that to make sure that you can land and hold short of that one way with no problems. Boom! If for any given reason you're uncomfortable and unsure that you can execute a land and hold short maneuver, you should just say unable. Nice and clear, unable back to ATC and all they're gonna do is just reroute you to do something else and everyone remains safe and everything is fine. So never be afraid to say unable. If you're at the student pilot level, you should not be executing a land and hold short operation. That is for something later after you've already got your license. But even if you already have your license, you still may not be comfortable in that situation. Regardless, never be afraid to say unable at any given point in time and you'll be fine. Because once you repeat it back, you have fully committed to landing and hold short and you need to execute that because you, the reason why you're being asked to do this, there may be someone else landing on that crossing one way at the, at the exact same time that you are. Something else is going on. So they're asking you to land and hold short with purpose and intention. It's not an option. It's with purpose and intention. And if you commit to this and you repeat this back over the airways that you're going to do this, you have committed to doing this and you must execute this maneuver for safety reasons so it's not an option you must commit to it if of course you've repeated back that you're going to do so so you want to land and hold short and you want to be aware with the load and the conditions that you're given can you execute this this is why it's always good to know how much runway do you need to land as well as always how much do you need to take off at any given time you always want to have those calculations with every airport you go to just in case you have to run across this you can always look at the airport diagram, torch supplements, everything else, and they can kind of tell you these kind of quick readouts if they're not given to you how much runway you're going to be dealing with if you have to hold short of a taxiway or of a runway. So that's one thing you want to do as you're mentally preparing for it and say you've already committed to it and you're getting ready to land and you're coming in. And then with that being said, now this gives you an opportunity to practice certain maneuvers. For example, your short field landing. 
excellent opportunity for to practice a short field landing if you know you have to land and hold short of a runway. So you can execute that maneuver and already start thinking about that, already start planning for that. Boom! If you want a review of the best tips for a short field landing, there's videos on this page. Link at the end of this video. Where them links be at? Hey! Boom! So let's just say you were asked to land and hold short of runway 25 and you've already done the calculations, you've already verified everything with all of your documentation, your airport diagram, chart supplements, everything. You know you only have 2,500 feet of runway, but based on your load, based on conditions, based on everything, you've calculated that that's more than enough runway that you need and you can land and hold short. So you repeat it back and you commit to it and you're ready for that. Boom, the setup is going good, everything is going fine, your downwind, your base leg, your final, everything is looking beautiful. But then you begin to execute that short field landing and you notice that for some reason maybe you're going too fast or maybe you're too high or maybe you're floating across the first section of the runway. Remember, even on a regular landing se sequence, if you can't land on the first third of the runway, it is a very good idea for you to go around. You always want to touch down on that first third of the runway as soon as possible for nice safety reasons and making sure you have more than the run enough runway to bleed off that airspeed. But in this scenario, the runway's been shortened for you already because you need to land and hold short and you already noticed that you're going too fast and you're not going to be able to make it. What do you do? What is your option? Boom! Remember, you still have the option to go around. So always know that that is on the table for you, even in a lasso situation where you're landing and holding short. If you know you're not going to be able to land and hold short where you were requested to land and hold short, then you should go around and you should immediately, again, fly the airplane first, execute the go around, and then communicate that you're going around looking out for traffic and making sure that you're in a good situation here. It's all about safety in this scenario. Never be afraid to call a go around, even in this situation. Boom! A few major takeaways. If you ever ask to do a lasso and you're a student pilot, decline and just say student pilot unable. Even if you already have your license and you do not feel comfortable, just say unable. And that way they can reroute you to do something else and everyone remains safe and all is good. It's not a big deal to just say unable. Never be afraid to say unable at any given point throughout your pilot journey. Once you commit to it, then you want to make sure that you fully understand what you're committing to. How much runway are you going to be dealing with? Maybe they tell you this automatically. They tell you something like clear the land on runway 33. Land and hold short runway 25, 2,500 feet available. You want to make sure, can you work with 2,500? Is that based on your load, based on conditions? Are you good with that? And then once you repeat it back that you're going to do that, you're going to execute that maneuver, you know that you're dealing with it. Fine, all is good. Execute the maneuver, do your short field landing, make sure you're in a good place. Once you do that and you see that all of a sudden, you're not going to be able to do it. You're too fast, you're too high, you're too slow, you're too low, whatever it may be then you need to execute a go around and you need to make sure that you fly the airplane first, execute the maneuver of the go around and then immediately communicate and notify ATC that you're going around and be looking for separation from other aircraft in the area that may be dealing with the op opposite or crossing runway or taxiway or anything that's going on. Hey, boom! And if you ever ask to land and hold short, say less and do what's in this video. I am Donovan Batiste. Hey. This is Leadership Mindset, a place where you can come for free and fun videos about everything that you need to know for you to become a pilot. Because I want you to feel what pilots all over the world feel when we swinging and banging that thing. Hey, love you one time. Subscribe to this channel.